Hey, what is up, everybody? I'm here to give you my review for WWE 205 Live for May 16th, 2017. And sorry, this video took a little while to get up, but when this episode had aired, um, I had um, to study for finals, and I also was gearing up to pack for Texas, which is why I've been in the different scenery. I've mentioned why I'm here, um, cause grad, cousin's gr graduation, so... Um, that's why it took me a while to get this episode up, so I'm here to give you the review now. I finally watched the episode last night, so let me talk about it. Um, so we had Corey Graves and Tom Phillips on commentary for this show. Uh, the first thing we had was we had an interview segment with uh, Austin Aries, and before the interviewer could finish asking him his question, he's like, I'm a professional journalist myself. I know exactly what you're going to ask me. You're going to ask me how Neville's associate, TJP, is, gonna, is planning on taking me out so he can get a shot at the Cruiserweight Championship. And he says uh, that Neville is, um, that TJP is not Neville's associate. Um, he's just Neville's lapdog. He's just this person that Neville sends to take his, to take, do all his dirty work. And, um, you know, um, Austin Aries then says that um, TJP isn't going to get a Cruiserweight title match because for two reasons. One, because Neville's a liar. And two, because TJP isn't going to be taking out Austin Aries because he's not on Austin Aries' level no matter what condition his leg is in. And, you know, that was the entire promo. I thought Aries cut a, cut a pretty good promo there. And it was, a, yeah, it was a pretty enjoyable promo. And then we had the first actual match on the show. It was Noam Dahl with Alicia Fox versus Grand Matalik. Um, I thought this was a pretty solid opening matchup here. You know, it was nice to see Grand Matalik back um, on television or the WWE Network, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he pretty much took it to uh, uh, Noam Dahl. He hits a Hoi on uh, sending Dahl outside the win. He goes to hit a dive on him, but Alicia Fox stands it in his way, and Noam Dahl uses this to chop lock him. And um, Noam Dahl dominates the matchup for a few minutes, but then um, Grand Matalik makes a comeback. He hits like a slim blade bulldog, and then he hits an actual dive on the outside. Then Noam Dahl starts to work on the injured arm of uh, Grand Matalik. He stretches it over the top rope. I thought he did some good work with that. Then Grand Matalik hits an Intergoey, goes to hit a uh, high cross body. Hits a elbow drop from the uh, top t top rope, but um, Noam Dahl kicks out of it. Then Grand Matalik goes for a drop kick with the metal rope. Um, Noam Dahl moves out of the way and hits a high kick for the win, and that was the entire match. And you know I wanted to see Grand Matalik win, but it made sense to have Noam Dahl win just because of the fact that they're actually doing stuff with Noam Dahl, so that made sense. Um, and the match. You know, I thought it was a pretty decent match. I kind of wish they would use Grand Matalik a little bit more than they would because he's actually a good wrestler. So I hope that's a sign of that, but we'll have to wait and see. And then uh, the Brian Kendrick gets interviewed, and we find out that the Brian Kendrick's going to be facing um, Akio Tozawa on um, the next episode, which was last night's episode of uh, 205 Live. And um, Kendrick says that um, he is going to absolutely um, destroy... Um, Akira Tozawa because uh, it's a street fight. So he's the perfect. He has the perfect mindset for this match because he can take. It's there's no countouts. He can take the fight on the outside. He can since there's no DQ. He can use his mind to do anything he wants to Akira Tozawa. And he said, but sometimes things don't go according to plan. And he says that he didn't plan that Akira Tozawa was going to be this stubborn and going to want to pander to the universe with his screams um, when he tried to mentor him. And he says that he hopes that Akira Tozawa um, has picked up on a few of his lessons he's been trying to teach him because um, he's going to need him next week or else we'll never see him on 205 Live ever again. And I thought this was a good promo by Kendrick. I I'm still have pretty much enjoyed this feud between V. Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa. And I can't wait to see the street fight uh, from that episode. Um, and then we had a return video package for uh, Cedric Alexander. They announced that he's returning on the next episode of 205 Live, which is pretty cool right there. And, you know, it's going to be nice to see Cedric Alexander back. I'm assuming when he comes back, he's probably going to blow off this uh, Alicia Fox and Noam Dahl feud. So that's why also I'm happy to see him back. I'm assuming he's going to team up with, like, Witch Swan to... Um, 
like take out a Noam Dunn, maybe he'll pick a tag team partner as well, probably like Aria Diwali or something. Um, I'm not really sure. Maybe the Brian Kendrick will pick, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, but yeah, it's going to be nice to see Cedric Alexander back. I hope they utilize him better to his potential. And then we had uh, the next match. It was uh, Tony Nese versus Mustafa Ali. And I actually thought this was a... Well, actually, wait. This match never happened, so I don't know why I would say that. Uh, the match never happens. Drew Gulak attacks uh, Mustafa Ali from behind, throws him back first into the barricade, um, throws him head first into the steel post, and then he pretty much feeds Mustafa Ali to Tony Nese, tells him to hit the knee in the corner. Tony Nese does. And... Uh, Afterwards, Drew Gulak holds up the no high flying um, sign, um, which I, I liked this uh, attack here. I thought this was good, um, and it added layers to the um, Drew Gulak Mustafa Ali feud, so I enjoyed this attack here. Then we have the next um, segment, which Juan gets interviewed, and he asks uh, what, how he feels um, that Alicia Fox and uh, Noam Dog are planning revenge on him, and he says that um, he doesn't. They're not going to be able to play, um, get revenge on him because he's smaller than them. And then somebody comes up and says, are you Richard T. Swan? And they give him a package. And Witch Swan says, I'm not Witch Swan. That guy looking at himself in the mirror is Witch Swan. And uh, it's we see that it's Aoya Davawi. The guy goes to give him the package. And uh, Aoya Davawi is like, it's about time my sunglasses got here. And he's like, wait a minute. These aren't my sunglasses. So then he walks away. Um, Jack Gallagher goes to get the package himself, and Aoya Devari comes up to him and says, what are you doing with my package? Um, and he's like, get rid of my package, you scoundrel. And then Jack Gallagher says, I'm going to let that one slide, but remember what happened last time you called me a scoundrel, which I do remember that. So then Jack Gallagher gives him the package, Aoya Devari opens it, and a, this powder poops up in his face, um, and he gets all pissed about it. Uh, this segment was terrible. It made everybody look stupid. It made Jack Gallagher look like a goof. Obviously, it made Aria Diwali look like a goof. It made even Noam Dar and Alicia Fox look like a goof. Because why would they um, try this stint if Witch Swans tried it himself before? So nobody came out looking good here. Um, and um, yeah, it didn't. It just was terrible. And um, yeah. The best part about it, though, was afterwards Tom Phillips was laughing about it, and Corey Graves was trying to be a heel def and try to defend Aya Devari, but he just broke down into laughter himself, so that was the best part about this whole thing. Um, so then uh, we had the main event. It was uh, TJP versus Austin Aries. Um, I thought this was a good main event here. Austin Aries comes out just storming out because he means business, and TJP has injured his leg a couple of times. And TJP throws his, his jacket into Aerie's face. Aerie gets pissed about it, throws the jacket into TJP's face. TJP cowards out of the wind. And Aerie goes to attack him, but TJP gets the better of him, throws him back first into the barricade. And then he goes to hit a um, senton, springboard senton onto uh, Aerie's, but Aerie gets the knees up and he beats the crap out of TJP. Um, but TJP then starts to get the upper hand. And he works over the injured leg of Aries. He gets caught up on the top rope. And TGP just goes right to work on it. And Aries starts to make a comeback. He uh, goes to hit um, hit the neck breaker uh, um, onto, the, onto the ropes while he's on the apron. But TJP goes after his leg, pushes him off the apron, hits the uh, wrecking ball drop kick, and uh, covers him. Aries kicks out. And then Aries hits the neck breaker over the ropes while he's in the ring. And then he hits a heat sick and missile. And... Uh, then he uh, gets him in the ring. TJP goes after his leg again. Gets Aries in the knee ball, but uh, behind the referee's back, TJP was holding the ropes, and the referee catches him and forces TJP to break the hold. TJP goes for the detonation kick, and Austin Aries um, reverses it into the last chancery. TJP taps out, and afterwards, immediately, Neville gets in the ring and beats the crap out of Aries. He really goes after his injured leg, stomps on it, while he's uh, against the ropes, uh, um, slams it against the post. He gets him into a submission hold, and Jack Gallagher comes out um, and evens the odds. He hits TJP with the umbrella, and then he hits a headbutt on him and sends Neville packing, and uh, Jack Gallagher and Aerie stand tall. Um, overall, I like the main event segment here, and I'm not sure exactly what they're trying to set up here. If they're going to have Aerie finally dethrone Neville and win the Cruiserweight Championship, which I think would be 
uh, the better decision, or if they're going to have um, Neville um, retain the title and go into a feud with TJP. Um, since they're trying to tease in that, how Neville won't give TJP his title match, or if they're going to have Aries win the title, and then you can still you can do the rematch with Neville and Aries, and then you can like include TJP in it. They have a lot of options, and I, I don't I'm sure I'm not sure exactly where they're going with it, but we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but overall, I thought that uh, this was a decent episode of 205 Live. The only thing I really didn't care for was that whole Witch Swan segment they did. Um, but it wasn't like a great episode either. You know, the matches did deliver and stuff. Um, but it wasn't like an amazing episode, like a must-see episode. So if I had to rate it, I'd probably rate it a uh, 6.5 out of 10 because it was actually a decent episode. And, uh, yeah, I just, enjoy, you know, a lot of the matches were decent matches. Um, and it, it did feel like, though, you did see all this stuff, like especially TJP and Aries. I mean, we've seen that match about, what, I would say maybe like three times already, so... Um, it was nothing really new there, um, you know, but we did get a different match with Noam Dahl versus Grand Matt Uh, they did a good job building up the Brian Kendrick, Akira Tozawa match. Uh, the Drew Gulak on Mustafa Ali was good, and, I mean, the TJP AOE still had a decent match, actually, because they did different stuff in that match. It wasn't like they did all the same moves. Um, but, you know, it did feel like I see, um, but that's still a match we've seen a lot of before. But, it, you know, it's like I said, it wasn't like a big must-see episode either. So I'm going to rate it a 6.5 out of 10. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. Please make sure you subscribe to the uh, Owen the Talkinator and CM Brothers channels. And make sure you subscribe to uh, this channel as well for more content. And that's pretty much it, guys. And make sure to subscribe to all the other channels and check out all the other Facebook pages down in the description box as well. And that's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.